Well, a rousing rendition of the national anthems, both the uh, United States of America and Canada, both teams ready to play tonight. This is the uh, North American Derby. Much more at stake than just the winning of a rugby game here. This speaks to uh, national pride. And uh, there's definitely uh, no love lost between these two teams. Fourth meeting of the uh, between the countries so far this this uh, calendar year. Canada's won the first three, one in the Pacific Nations Cup, and then two World Cup qualifiers. They've all been close, uh, and states could easily have won two of them. And so many big storylines for Canada tonight, which we'll get to as play begins. So here we go, Canada to kick off. Oh, and the kicker's a good one. Deep into the 22. Strong running by the Americans. It'll be physical. Canada's wide defense being tested early. Connor Trainer is up to the task, though. Putting in a nice tackle on his opposite. And that's Derek Aspen. Flanker always plays, also plays hooker for the U.S. Carrying the ball up. Chapman, the center. Oh, the box kick by Davies. Great take by Fitzpatrick, the man who played fly half in the first match. Now back in his more comfortable uh, fullback position. And that's Mike Schultz out on the left wing. Wearing the number 12 jersey tonight. Ooh, enterprising play from Canada. Several recycles. Canadian fans will notice uh, Sean White at scrum half tonight. Ooh, kick and shape option by Maguire. Ball going straight out of bounds. Well, a big change in the Canada lineup. Obviously, a big loss Friday night in the game against Uruguay with the... Uh, injury facial injury to captain Andrew Tiedemann uh, and uh, so he's lost for the tournament but starts tonight for tight head Ryan March lock Kyle Bailey open side Alistair Clark flanker Kyle Gilmore and in a big call 18 year old Giuseppe Dutoit right making his senior international debut Great kick to the corner by uh, Sean White. And Ian, you're so right. That is such a big call. 18-year-old uh, thrown into the cauldron uh, as a fly half. I don't believe since the days of uh, Gareth Reese, uh, 1986, that we've had a player that young in that uh, such crucial position for Canada. Well, he's a very, very, uh, very fine player. And I think he'll, Crowley's got, comp Coach Crane Crowley has confidence in him. And I'm sure that confidence will be rewarded. Uh, reads the game extremely well and an excellent goal kicker. Ooh, and a clearance kick by the U.S. Straight into touch. The ball up in the commentary box. Uh, in the absence of Andrew Tiedemann, who was captaining the side, uh, loose head Doug Wooldridge and Number eight, Adam Kleberger, sharing the captaincy tonight for uh, for Canada. Center combination, the same as Friday. Mike Schultz at 12, Connor Trainer at 13. Stolen line out by the U.S. Canada going long to the tail. Lots of contact already so far. Kleberger wearing the unfamiliar number eight jersey for his country. And the box kick is high. Oh, that's Maguire. Good footwork by the young winger. The U.S. trying to hold him up to win the scrum put in. That's Dutois with the long ball out to Schultz. Schultz finds the gap and then frees Trainer. 
Good play by the Canadians so far. Kleberger in the middle of the field. Oh, great timing. Gilmore hitting the ball up. It's a man with the headgear, so mostly to protect him. He received a big cut on his head in the first game, protecting his stitches with that scrum cap. This is Wilson Ross back inside to Clark. This is Dutois. Trying to flick that ball in field to keep it in play, and he does. Gathered by Connor Trainer. Good work by the young fly half. This is Schultz stepping in at first receiver. And Wilson Ross with the pick and go driven through by Barkwell. Canada's attack looking very fluid so far. Lots of guys stepping in at first receiver, scrum half. Canada's managed to bring themselves within the US 22. See if they can get something from this. Schultz again. Fitzpatrick to Kleberger. That's Woolrich. Schultz just managing to put that ball on his foot. Out of bounds, the Americans. Well, some uh, lots of phases from Canada, certainly uh, since last Friday. You know, the players were not happy with the their error count in the game last uh, Friday against Uruguay, which they were probably a little bit lucky to, to, to win. Kieran Crowley, coach, uh, spoke about more accuracy. Uh, and already we saw some... Uh, some Good, effective, long cutout passes from uh, Giuseppe Dutoit at, uh, Dutoit at number 10. And uh, a bit crisper support to the ball. And certainly this is an area where Canada have work to do. Taken in the middle by Bailey. He's been used twice now as a line-out option. The uh, man with the number six jersey on his back. But the ball's gone loose. The U.S. in possession, but under pressure. Loose pass. There's Barkwell going through. Oh, I like the way that guy plays. Just hungry all the time, Ray Barkwell. Well, a loose pass either way. Should have been a promising turnover for, uh, for the Eagles. And instead, they then back it up with a, a loose pass of their own. And it's probably going to cost them three points. Well, you're right, it was loose from Canada at first, but then uh, the U.S. Uh, doing their own in kind. But it was the reaction of the, the Canadian defense to when they s saw that there was an error in the uh, U.S. play to seize and put them under pressure, forcing them to concede the penalty. So I think the key area to watch for Canada tonight is their... Uh There's Barkwell through on the loose ball. Yeah. And this is where Canada wins the, the uh, scrum penalty as U.S. desperately trying to hold on to possession. Seals off that uh, contest area. And uh, Uruguayan referee Joaquin Montez making the decision. And a chance for uh, Dutoit to open the account for Canada. And for himself at this, at this level. Well, kick is strong and the kick is good, as you can tell by the crowd reaction. So that's uh, Canada on the scoreboard, three points to nil, eight the, minutes into the game. In the match Friday against Argentina, the Eagle defense was caught fairly narrow in the first 20, 25 minutes of the game. Uh, and Argentina were able to take advantage. We'll see if Canada can do the same. One can, Canada's going to need good footwork, ball, and ability to offload the ball and not just go into contact all the time. And again, critical restart not gathered. Well, that was a fantastic kick by Joe Crowley, the U.S. fullback. That restart went about uh, 40 meters in the air. Loose, scrappy play. 
Canada intelligently plays the offside line at the ruck. Forward pass called on U.S. scrum half. Sean Davies won't be happy with that. Yeah, well, we were always talking about the basics. Another area for Canada to improve on from Friday night is just, just the accuracy of their passing. A lot of passes Friday night were behind the receiver, which slowed down the attack. That's an area that can improve. Bit of footwork, some more decoy runners, support runners coming onto the ball at pace. See if we can uh, complete some offloads. That's the way through the defense. And, uh, you know, we certainly got the, you know, the, the attacking players with Schultz, Trainer, Wilson Ross. You know, there's more than enough ability to do, to do that. And a very mobile back row as well. Oh, free kick against Canada for delaying the put in. If you listen to the referee's instructions, he will also, besides saying crouch, bind, and set, he will be responsible for telling the scrum half when to put the ball into the scrum. And any uh, delay on that results in a free kick. As we see here, Captain Dolan taking the ball away. This man played incredibly last night for his, or the first night for his country, Cam Dolan. And he looks like he wants to lead from the front again tonight. Davies. Strong hitting by Kleberger. U.S. still able to keep possession up. Davies is isolated on the left side. Canada still defending their line, defending the 22. Ball available at the back of the ruck. And the Eagles had some success against Argentina in the close quarters. Pick and goes and the, the one-off runners. Maybe try to turn slow ball into some into some quicker ball. Well, they've done it now. There goes number four. Good cover tackle by by uh, right wing Duncan McGuire there. Oh, Paulo on the dummy run, and that puts the left winger for the U.S. Tim Maupin under the post. Great play by the U.S. You've got to admire that the the discipline. The tenacity to keep going forward and then the timing of the dummy run on Paulu, the man they expected to be taking it up the guts. Well, there's the close in uh, charge. Good, great run by number by the lock. Quick recycle. Tui to Samoa through. And now we have the dummy line from number 12, the inside center, Mike Pulu, and left wing Tim Maupin looping around. One of those midfield plays. Depending on how you look at it, it's borderline offside, uh, borderline dummy runner, but uh, in this case, allowed to play is allowed to continue, and 7-3 uh, lead for the U.S. Well, the timing was very good on that play, I must say, for the U.S. And very, it's a difficult play to recover from once it happens in front of you so close to your goal line. And interesting that the U.S. has obviously worked Let's not forget, against Argentina, at 20 to 9 down, they had a similar chance, weren't able to produce a, a, a bit of magic like that, and uh, conceded a late try for a 27-9 scoreline against Argentina. The game was much closer than that. Davies kicking, received by Wilson Ross. He, oh, not releasing on Maguire. That's a bit of a mistake on the uh, young winger's part. So Canada just coming on the attack, and, and Maguire not releasing the ball when he was held on the ground concedes a penalty. Yeah, borderline call. Just again, Dun Duncan, good, strong run. He's half through the gap. You know, got the ball in one hand. If he could just free it up and just slip that ball away to the support runners. So, and that's just that's just the that's tail, just tail end of the play. He's held, not back on his feet. And now giving uh, Joe Cowley a, a long-distance shot at goal. As the night fell Friday, as we got into the second game, as the air got heavier, these most of these long-distance penalty shots fell short. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, if Cali can get get the distance. Ooh, ambitious, just to the left by Cali. So Canada touches the ball down. So 22 meters. 
And the U.S. certainly seem to have a lot of spring in their step. Well, again, as we mentioned, I think they took a lot away from that Argentina game. You know, four tries to nothing in a 27-9, you know, suggests one-way traffic, but it wasn't. And, uh, you know, they, as we said at the top of the show, they've been close to Canada on two of the three occasions this year. And, uh, you know, they're definitely looking for, uh, you know, fourth time lucky. Oh, Canada's turned the ball over. Some good handling from Kleberger and Bailey. Puts Wilson Ross down the left flank. Good work by the winger, just a tap tangle. Tap tackle, pardon me. Keeping him out, but U.S. infringing at the breakdown. Entering on the side. So good work by Canada. Yeah, good burst up the wing and a, a very, very good uh, uh, cover tackle by the States with Wilson Ross looking like he was almost away. And going up the up, and I think it's... Uh, you just watch, there's Dolan, the captain, you know, tremendous, not only size, but tremendous range as a back row player. Good tackle. Canada line out on attack here. And All the right. U.S., this is an area where the U.S. can create some damage because that, at, you know, in the back row and in the second row, they've got the, uh, they've got the height advantage on Canada. Uh, so Canada's going to have to really uh, manipulate the line well and throw accurately. Yeah, you definitely say the U.S. has the, uh, the height advantage, but Canada has the mobility advantage. Um, Kyle Bailey, known to play in the back row as well. He's in the second row today. And they've, they're playing almost three flankers in their black back row position. Well, the U.S. did not contest that time. Just looked to stop the drive. Wilson Waros coming off his blind wing to get involved in the play. And that's Woolridge. Right. Oh, it's a good maturity on Dutrois to let that ball go. Maguire coming in to help at ruck time. Schultz with no time to rush defense by the Americans. They're really trying to deny that ball getting out wide. Wilson Ross, he's handled several times tonight already. Sean White, one of the strengths of his games is the running with the ball. Sometimes uh, some said he might overdo it a bit and not free the ball to his teammates. Schultz, trainer, stepping inside, offloading to his partner. That's good work by the two centers. Oh, nice work. Canada, strong up the right-hand side. McQueen. U.S. very good on the counter ruck, though. Derek Aspen taking it up. Canada just needed a half back. It, some good build up from Canada and then needed a half back. Once again, the loose pass, though. And that one's going to stay in bounds. Maguire's kept it in bounds. He's got Sean White with him. And here comes Schultz running up. Oh, Ryan March just putting that ball down. That was good work by the Canadians. It's just a short little uh, errors creeping into their play, unfortunately. Yeah, watch the ball. Cleaver cleared away. Some lovely play here. And this, the key here is there's the offload. And that gives the, the opportunity to break the line. Clean ball from Canada here at the breakdown. But there was no halfback in position. Sean White had been tackled across okay. the field. Nobody right. there to play halfback and move the ball away. Mark. Counter ruck by USA, Excellent. turnover. No, move. no, 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 okay. It's good, it's good. Yeah, Encouraging play. I, I tell you, I'm a fan of um, both Schultz and Trainer. And uh, individually, yes, but those two guys in tandem, I think they've got a bright Cut. future ahead. They're Cut. both ball playing centers Bang. who like to free the ball up in the contact area. They take great lines, and it seems like they're developing a relationship how to play off each other as Cam Dolan picks up at the back of the scrum. Great tackle by uh, scrum half Sean White. U.S. still able to recycle. Derek Aspen hitting up the open side flanker for the U.S. Ball gone deep in behind. And the U.S. looking to clear their lines. And they found touch at halfway. Good work. Toby Lestrange, the U.S. fly half, taking territory over possession. Again. Coach Kieran Crowley talking about the need for accuracy and to drop the error rate. And, uh, you know, Canada there with, uh, you know, 
into the third or fourth phase in the move and just a loose pass and a, a, a you know a drop you know those are the the momentum killers because it's uh, you know Canada's you know hinted at the fact that they're going to be able to open up seven, the uh, seven, seven. Eagles defense tonight Lionel's gone to the back overthrown Gilmore Kleberger stepping up to make that tackle Lestrange missed pass to Chapman and there's a try score going down the left wing again Maupin Referee's got Number eight, come on. He's got his arm out. He wants to have a word with uh, Kleberger. So much. I told you. No good play. Okay. The next decision I will be for the decision. Okay. Now, we'll see what he's okay. talking about here. Watch for Kleberger okay. in yeah. the replay. This is good work. Maupin comes down the left hand side. And there's Kleberg. Oh, he just puts a little shoulder in to the supporting uh, American player. I believe it was scrum half, Sean Davies. And then referee right behind him, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately for Kleberger, spots the infraction. And uh, I thought that's good refereeing just to give him the warning. Yeah, I think uh, Canada would be maybe a wee bit disappointed in their uh, backline defense and that uh, that move with, uh, you know, numbers that looked four on four and the uh, just got caught a little bit narrow and uh, just some good accurate passing by the Eagles, put uh, left wing Tim Maupin away, and a good run. And now an opportunity for the Eagles to extend their lead to 10-3. And Lestrange is sure a foot. So that does take the Eagles out to a score of 10 points to three over Canada. Pardon me, Joe Cowley kicking, number 15. It was interesting, there was some, uh, some talk in the American media after Friday night's game that uh, the Friday night's fullback, Adam Siddle, uh, be given a run at number 10 tonight. And uh, it seemed to be the, uh, uh, some of the chatter. It hasn't happened. Uh, the uh, coach, Mike Tolkien, is st stuck with Toby Lestrange. And uh, so far, off to a reasonable start. Uh, loose play at ruck time for the U.S. And now the ball, they have to win it, but the ball is up in the air. Referee can call Maul at any time. And even if this collapses, if it's not produced immediately, you'll watch him signal turnover to Canada. And there goes the arm, turnover to Canada. And again, just that, those little, the accuracy, you know, that was, should have been just an easily tidied up, you know, basic ruck situation uh, for the U.S. And, just a bobbled okay. ball at the back, yeah. you know, and they okay. did well, tried very hard to you. rescue the situation, but unsuccessful. And yeah. opportunity here for Canada. Left though move would see uh, Sean White with a lot of space on his own, but uh, ball probably coming right. And you know, keep an eye on, on left wing Justin Wilson Ross, sorry Jordan Wilson Ross, who will uh, hopefully hold up some of the defenders as an inside option off uh, fly half Seppi Detroit. Kleberger under a lot of pressure at the back of that scrum. White's gone for the left-footed box kick. Watch the bounce. Rolled into touch. So that's uh, some territorial advantage for Canada. And this makes it uh, very tough on the American hooker, Philip Thiel, to be accurate. Second good angled kick by, by White. Uh, a right footer down to the right corner earlier in the half. And that one off the left foot into the left corner. And beautifully judged. And a chance for Canada to really put pressure on here at the line-out. Pressure is there, but the U.S. are sure with their kicks. And they're using their number seven quite a bit to hit the ball up off of these uh, rucks and line-outs. Now the box kick comes in from Davies. Ah, the referee is signaled offside on uh, one of the... U.S. forwards who was loitering in front at the side of the ruck, blocking the Canadians from coming through to attempt to block that kick. Yeah, I mean, good exit strategy there by the States. A well-executed line-out, you know, hit it up in the midfield. Ruck, box kick is set up to, to go, but then forwards that are just not involved in the ruck, but just standing in a blocking position are picked up by referee Montez. One of those things, it uh, happens all the time. There's, there's the, uh, the, the pass, and now as he shapes the box kick, 
the players that are guard in, the, in front of the ball guarding the ruck. It looks like the Chicago Bears out yeah. there, eh? the way that front line is. And those are the 50, <laughs> 50 decisions which can swing matches. You know, yeah. we had some concerns about a possible blocker line in the U.S. try that was allowed. And here's now a kick uh, chance for Detroit to uh, narrow the, narrow the scoreline to 10-6. But obviously, some good some good drill by the states. They they that that would uh, that kick ahead would be allowed and on a lot of occasions. Oh, he's just just wide with that attempt. Uh, the young fly half. So score remains USA ten, Canada three. But Canada knocking on the door. Well, he'll be a little disappointed with that, but uh, we can't say he's a very uh, accomplished start. 24 minutes, hasn't looked out of place at all. And I'm sure that with every passing minute, he'll grow in confidence. Cowley goes deep. And there could be the uh, confidence that you're mentioning, Ian, that won't be so good for young de toi to uh, drop that right off the restart after missing that penalty attempt. Well, Saad's Law coming through loud and clear there. Um, ball finding him like a magnet and uh, obviously would not expect him to put that down under n any normal circumstances. Lots right. of height on that one. I guess so you're 18 years old playing in your first international test match. You're allowed one of those. He'll be back. And great to see all the senior players pick him up, give him a pat on the back. Canada Scrum puts pressure. Inside ball, but met strongly by Sean White. Good tackle. And that's Dolan with the pick and go, the captain. And this is where the U.S. have shown some ability. <laughs> oh, they've gone wide to Harriman. Second row ranging out wide on the left-hand side. Pretty fat, but the strange showing and going. The ball's in the air. Again, if Canada can prevent it from being played. Okay, eight. Out. Move over there. Move. Back. Oh, nice strong tackle by Barkwell. Run! Release! 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 Referee, you can hear him calling several times for the release. Not given, and now he's going to have Shut a up. word. Number five, please. And a trouble brewing here. Penalty for not releasing at the tackle. And the yellow card. Ooh. Kyle Bailey interfering with the quick tap taken by uh, Sean Davis. Well, that was it, wasn't it? It was not just the penalty for not releasing in the tackle area. It was when Sean Davis went for the quick tap that Kyle Bailey infringed that uh, he got the referee's wrath and then and 10 course, minutes in the bin. The... Uh, the U.S. will be going for the post because the 10-meter advance has brought the kick into, into range. Oh, it's a triple threat penalty, isn't it? That, that whole sequence from not rolling away to Kyle Bailey infringing gets him a yellow card and gives the U.S. a more kickable opportunity by moving them up 10 further meters. And Canada will have to play a man down for the next 10 minutes. Cowley's having a great night. That one's straight between the uprights. And while teams are accustomed and uh, capable of playing with 14 men, certainly in defense, uh, it's always an interesting uh, measure to uh, find out how the team with the extra player may fare. So Canada's a player in the bin. USA has already scored three points. Will it only be three? Will they score again? We'll have to wait and see. Fitzpatrick kicking off. Hey, Quiet. Mm, still some whiff on the U.S. attack is there. They've lost the ball forward in contact. So Canada now with an opportunity. Young March, a tight head. Schultz giving the ball standing still. He's under pressure. 
And that's Gilmore. Now the Canadian forwards will have to step up and do so much more work being a man down. Wilson Ross. Interesting decision by a referee. Wilson Ross is in possession, fighting, pumping those legs going forward. There he is. A little confusion as to who the next receiver should be. McGuire trying to clean up. Connor Trainer, Kleberger. Ball slapped down by the U.S. Referee says no, not forward. So playing the advantage. Ooh, and he's, he's going to go back and give the, the Eagles the ball. I would have said that was advantage. They were clearly over the... Uh, over over the line and had a chance, you know, basically just on a two-on-one made a clear error of their own. Tough call for uh, tough call for the official. And play through mistakes, just you know, again halfback, you know, needs to be able to be there and clear the ball. There's the turnover. That to me is advantage. Ooh, it's borderline, but uh, the U.S. will be disappointed that they couldn't hold on to that ball and uh, and 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 play in 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 behind the Canada defense. Okay. I think Canada's a couple of times where yeah. Sean White's involved in okay, one phase you. of play across field and tackled on the ground. That's a long way to run to be at the base to get the ball away. So, you know, read the play. Yeah, yeah. The ball's clearly won. You're, you know, regardless of the number on your back, Crouch. Be, be, be prepared to play in the scrum half position. Nine. You know, keep, keep, the, keep the tempo of the game up. I couldn't agree with him more, Ian. Canada putting the wheel on that scrum, forcing the U.S. to go where And there's some... Questions being asked out wide on Canada's defense. They're often crossing the gain line out there. But the ball's ripped out in the tackle. So Canada with a bit of a freebie. And that's Kleberger, a man who's as special as both 7s and 15s. Wilson Ross, another touch and a step. Good work. He needs support and he's got it. White goes to the boot. No chasers. The possession is turned over. And this is Maupin, the try scorer. White and Kleberger combine on the tackle. Davies finds Nick Wallace in the middle of the field. That's Aspen laying it off for a skipper. This is a great play by the U.S., you have to say. Some good continuity. Maybe a bit premature kicking that possession away. That was a good sequence of play by the U.S. Well, again, Canada's almost halfway through the bin. And uh, coping, com coping reasonably well, 14. Uh, just, in, just in the, as we look at the, uh, the ball moving left, Jordan Wilson-Ross almost through. And and just that opportunity to slip the ball away if possible. But obviously for that, you also need runners coming hard on your shoulder. Ball's overthrown by Barkwell. Some loose pass. Oh, some very sketchy play in, uh, in Canada's own 22. Um, risks uh, that are just being compounded. So once Barkwell uh, hits the overthrow, it seems the rest of the Canadian players are just trying to compound the, the, the pressure that they're under by throwing loose passes. I think Canada knew they were on a, on a knock-on advantage. Over, there's the ball. Knock-on advantage there. So now it's, there is a chance to have a go. You know it's going to come back. I think that uh, you know, Canada's been under a lot of pressure at the back of the lineout. Um, and we, you know, we've talked already about the, the big size advantage, and of course now with Kyle Bailey in the bin, Canadian lineout options are are particularly limited, and it's a you know real chance for the uh, for the Eagles to have a go at uh, at turning ball over. And again, too, the like scrumming eight on seven. It'll be interesting to see if Canada does bring. It looks like Mike Schultz is coming into the back row to play flanker, just to make sure to secure the ball, and uh, maybe eight to nine going right to uh, Sean White and then a decision to clear himself or move the ball on to fullback Jack Fitzpatrick. Ooh, U.S. putting on a huge surge on that scrum. And they've won. Turn them right around. Turnover. U.S. 
winning the put into the scrum. Real battle. Lou said Nick Wallace. Obviously, Canadian rugby fans will realize that he played for Canada in the U20 World Cup in 2009 in Japan, but uh, dual citizen and thrown his lot in with the States. Uh, scrumming well. And now Canada do not have the luxury of, they now have to go seven on eight because they can't be short in the back line. And there's a lot of, even though the right wing is over for the States, number 14, Ed Mills, there's a lot of room going right. And uh, Sean Davis, the scrum half, is pretty shifty in the open field. Well, Sean Davis, uh, definitely the scrum half is very shifty. The other guy I'm worried about is the U.S. Uh, captain, number eight, Cam Dolan, with, uh, you know, 20 meters on a diagonal. And, and he just, just might get to the corner. Just, just a crucial, crucial part of the game here because Canada cannot afford to go down another score, particularly if it's a try. But they've done well to reel that scrum. Good response by the Canadian forwards. Palu takes it up. So defense starts at the scrum. Excellent scrum by Canada. And they've got the U.S. You know, tackle behind the game line. It looks like they're going to turn them over at the, uh, in the mall situation. Very good work by Canada. Fantastic work. That is a complete team effort, starting with the seven forwards in the scrum. And then Mike Schultz doing his job with his buddies to hold up the opposition and win the put into the scrum and keep running the clock. Yeah, the scrum, you know, set piece, defense starts there, whether it's line out or scrum. And again, the States will not be pleased with that, you know, that just that maybe loss of concentration, eight on seven. Opportunity to need a stable platform, ability to attack instead, poor ball, and, uh, and uh, held up in the ensuing mall. Well done, Canada. Penalty against the U.S. for pulling it down, pulling the scrum down. So you see Canada in no rush. They've won the penalty. They'll keep running the clock for another 20 seconds if they can before they... And it, it'll be interesting to see if this little 90-second uh, segment, segment of the game, what an impact it has. Canada under pressure, 13-3 down, man short, scrum in the middle of the field, defend that scrum, win a penalty, clear. Could be a very important couple of times. I think the minute, still a minute and a half to go in the bin to Kyle Bailey. Yeah, but uh, could look back at the full time and say that, that was an important uh, short passage of play. Well, Barkwell looked to improve on his last throw, which was overthrown. He's gone to Gilmore at the front. And Canada again, the driving mall. And it's moving. So no referee, referee no not asking him to use the ball as yet. That's very good with seven forwards, the Canadians. The fans getting in behind this forward pack here. Ball Good decision by the young fly half not to go for the long miss. U.S. defense looking to shoot and maybe catch a counter-attack or an interception, pardon me. Canada's won that ruck. Slow ball, slow. Referee seen enough of that. It's just going to award okay, the scrum to Canada. And again, we, we, we talked earlier about the uh, passing. Uh, being able to put the ball in front of the receiver so they can accelerate onto it. And there's a couple there for Canada that move right to left in the back line. That passes were a little bit behind. Anyway, Kyle Bailey is back from his bin. And Canada only conceding the three points from the actual penalty when he left the field. And... Uh, Important. Okay, Just uh, okay. even if it's 13-3, Canada can negotiate this in these next two minutes, get to half, and then chance to sort of you know re-examine re their game plan and, and change you know alter if necessary their strategies for the second half. Nine. Set. Yes, nine. Quite. Oh, Ref referee saying. We'll look for his uh, comments. He's saying the, the Canadian scrum stood up. So at that uh, scrum there, that's the penalty. So Canada's 
front row under pressure, standing up, and that's a penalty. Cannot do that in the game of rugby. La próxima, el ocho. Number one. Okay, coming into the 39th minute. 39th minute. 13-3. Looked like Canada had sort of dodged one bullet, and now they face they face another uh, another Eagles attack. Just need to get to the halftime uh, halftime break. Well, Ian, as you say so often, this is a crucial phase of the game. These last these five minutes, seven minutes on either side of the halfway are vital to the game. The U.S. hit it up strongly. Blindside Daniel Barrett. Okay, move. Get out, get out. Get out of the camp. Get out of the camp. We need some. Ball needs to be produced quickly. U.S. going very well, going through the phases. Just a question: Who can, who can give it a bit of footwork, and who can give it a? Well, the ball's gone loose, and Canada in trying to pick the ball up. Got the Another second knock, so no advantage. Canada will have to put into the scrum. Just need a bit of footwork from the ball carriers. Just you know, run at some arms, try to make that half break, free up the hands to slip the ball away. It's such a difficult skill in in such a high traffic physical area of play. And as the clock moves into added time here in the first half, and we have to be, you know, in terms of territory and possession, and uh, you know, ball in hand, that uh, we have to be fair to say that the USA has been the better team this half and are deserving of their 13-3 lead. Definitely, they constructed a beautiful try after several phases of play. Uh, they've been playing very positively. They've been on the right side of the referees' decisions, that's for sure. Uh, and they've been a bit more accurate in, in their skills so far in this half. And they were actually close to Argentina on Friday. At 20 to 9, they missed an easy goal kick. And again, at 20 to 9, they lost the ball on the goal line. Uh, it could have set up a bit of a grandstand finish if they'd cashed in either of those two scoring chances. As it was, they conceded late and uh, put a bit of a gloss on the scoreline in Argentina's favor. Set. Yes, nine. Canada scrum under pressure, but no, the U.S. collapsing, going straight down. Shut up. <laughs> Loose head, Nick Wallace. <laughs> um, the referee not a fan of right now, not a fan of being questioned in any case. And uh, Jack Fitzpatrick steps up to find touch. We're in half nope. time. And we're at halftime. Canada trailing the U.S. by 10 points. The U.S. leading with a score of 13 to three over Canada on this second evening of the 2013 ARCs. Both teams purposely running into the change room to get ready for the second half. And joining us as sideline is uh, Brian Kelly with the mayor of Langford, Stu Young. Brian? Hi, guys. Thanks very much. Brian Kelly here down at the sideline with the mayor of Langford, Stu Young. Uh, this is a great facility, the Canadian Rugby Centre of Excellence, in large part due to the, everything that you guys do. Is the city of Langford just happy to have this event on once again? Oh, yeah. No, we get a lot of support from our residents. And, of course, you can see by the crowd here on a cold Tuesday night, you know, we're an enthusiastic crowd here. We love rugby in Langford, and, you know, we love these events coming here. We had a great time here last year, and it's brought people back again this year. Let's talk a little bit about the new facility. We, uh, we broke ground across the street on a new training facility. Talk a little bit about what, what that it means to a Rugby Canada and to the city of Langford. Well, you know, rugby, you know, needs all the help it can get. You know, we're moving up in the standings, you know, in the last year. Uh, everybody's done well, the women and the men. But you need a good training facility for them, and... We needed a gym, and so the council got behind it, the community got behind it, and of course our business people, and we knew that we could pull it off and help them out to get a new training facility. So yeah, we broke ground on that, and you know, it'll be world-class. It's a world-class facility, and 
We uh, like the athletes training here, and it's good for our community, and it's great entertainment, as we can see. All right, thank you very much, Stu. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We'll be back in just a minute. Second half, Canada trailing United States 13 to 3 here at the Canadian Rugby Center of Excellence in Langford, British Columbia. Brian, on behalf of the guys upstairs, we'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back. Just getting ready to start the second half. But the ARC out at West Hill Stadium would like to thank the main sponsors, the International Rugby Board. Tourism, Victoria. The City of Langford. Canadian Direct Insurance. And, of course, the province of British Columbia. Well, Ian, as we just get ready to start the uh, second half and the players starting to make their way back out onto the field, what are your impressions of the first half and the, uh, the hill that Canada has to climb in the second half? Well, I think the USA is full value for 13-3 lead. Uh, try to left winger Tim Maupin and a conversion of two penalties by fullback Joe Cowley, all balanced against a single penalty goal for uh, Canadian debutant outside half Giuseppe Detroit. Uh The USA has been a little bit better. Uh, they put pressure on the Canadian line out. Uh, the scrums have been untidy both ways, but you know the U.S. has perhaps slightly had the drop, and they've just been a, a little more fluid in their play. It's going to, for me, it's going to be uh, uh, one, you know, key piece could be uh, the introduction of, of subs in the second half and how that impacts the game. Uh, you know, who can come on as the, you know, as the impact sub. Um, you know, Canada, tell you. because Canada, they, you know, they need to. Uh, they need a good start to this half. They need to score first without question if they're going to win. And, uh, you know, there's definitely work to be done. Well, I tell you, one guy I know who would be an impact sub, and I'm surprised that he wasn't starting the game, is that Joe De La Salle, uh, the Burnaby Laker winger slash center. But he's lurking on the sidelines, ready to make an impact at any time. And really, the, you know, there's got to be a lot of good stuff happening inside before he's probably going to feature when, when he comes in. So, anyway... Se start of uh, the second half in every sport is very important and uh, particularly so for Canada tonight. Ooh, Kyle Bailey not secure on the, on the restart take, but Cam Dolan is for the U.S. And that's Paulo hitting them up in the centers. Schultz with a strong tackle, trying to hold the ball up as he does. And he's turned it over in the tackle area. Barkwell flips it out the back quickly. And that's, oh, that's Fitzpatrick trying to run the ball out from his own 22. Sean White digging. Ball in the hand of Schultz again. Wilson Ross taking on his opposite. Good go forward by the left winger for Canada. Very feisty play. And Canada possibly a wee bit lucky at that breakdown. I'm not sure how that ball came back, but uh, good forceful run by Wilson Ross. And, uh, you know, Canada not failing to gain the restart, not for the first time tonight. Uh, gave the U.S., uh, you know, uh, a good early possession. Canada's done well to uh, force the turnover and now kick downfield. And now a platform from which to play. It was good to see the adventure coming into the Canadian side right off the, uh, the turnover inside their 22. Fitzpatrick taking it up. And then Wilson Ross doing what he's uh, done all over the club league on the West Coast here since immigrating from uh, the Ontario area. That's a good take. No, that's, that's a flag now into the game. He's wearing number 16, Aaron Flag. Come into the second row for Canada. And the U.S. are ferocious at the breakdown, slowing down the ball for the Canadians. The Canadians resorted to the pick and go, and that's Barkwell, aided by Marsh, gone around the corner. Turnover ball, unfortunately. And the U.S. are certainly fired up in this half. Well, as you said, that uh, Canada and the U.S. have played three times. It's... Uh, Senior level so far so in 2013, and Canada's won them all, two of them by very narrow scores. And uh, the U.S. obviously pretty keen to right that balance. And again, Canada will be just disappointed that they didn't get that ball back. Uh, 
Interesting that they opted for a couple of pick and goes there, and maybe that's going to be the uh, tactic of choice to try and get some go forward ball in this half. Well, huge uh, blindside open for the box kick. Uh, should American scrum half Davies want to take it because the Canada winger is up flat on the left hand side. Scrums in the first half were really untidy, and it almost became a disadvantage to have the put in. Uh, so both teams will want to tighten up there that, uh, you know, provide some, a stable platform from which to uh, launch the moves. And it'd be interesting, U.S. has brought their right... Free right kick against they, Canada. Got, and they've got space out left. Dolan takes the ball up. Left wing was... Right wing was already well across. Ooh, flat pass. Oh, and Canada, oh, the U.S. has found a way through. That loose head prop surging. Good cover tackle by Schultz. You can hear the Canadian defense telling him to cover across. And Canada on the turnover. Good. Referee's playing advantage, so Canada looking to move the ball away. Bailey decides to hit it up. Well, that was terrific work by Schultz, trainer, and Woldridge. Good drift defense to start and then forcing the turnover. Dolan is sure with the kick. Once again, haven't seen him drop one all tournament, the American captain. And Lestrange goes to the air. And here comes Fitzpatrick. Oh, almost. Offside. Offside. I think knocked forward by uh, Fitzpatrick. Here comes... Here's Olympics. that drift defense by the Canadians. There's Schultz with the, the arms there. Just drifting across. He's got support of his buddy's trainer on the inside. So he's able to slap out and defend and make that cover tackle. And then the high kick by the U.S. And uh, lost forward by Canada on the catch. In a highly contested area. And it bounced forward and was played by a Canadian man in front of the catcher. Uh, no choice for offside? No, I'll no... Possibly because there was, had it, uh, had it not hit the Canadian player, the U.S. would have had a chance on a, on a counterattack. So referee Montez deemed the offside. And now Cowley trying to uh, add to his uh, eight points. Long range attempt, though, in the, in the heavy conditions. Well, this is not the score we want to see in that first five minutes of this half. But it's the score we do see. The U.S. stretching their lead. They're out now 16 points to three ahead of their North American rivals. And uh, Canada's really going to have to pull something out here. Well, we talked about Adam Siddle, the fullback from Friday night, maybe getting a go at number 10 tonight. That didn't happen, and uh, Siddle's not even in, in the name 23 for tonight. And uh, his uh, replacement at fullback, Joe Cowley, very influential in the game. Fitzpatrick has gone deep. And Davies returns. So, of course, now it's a, it's a fair ways back for Canada because they now need two converted tries to take the lead. Uh, you know, can still chip their way back with penalties, but, uh, you know, they need to get their hands on the ball and they need to keep the ball. Well, it's all psychological now. Once you get into this zone where you need two converted tries, as you said, Ian, you, you start to maybe take riskier plays. That one's not risky. That's money in the bank. Jordan Wilson-Ross, he's always crossed the gain line. Canada, ball in hand. Great running. Lined up. No, no. Referee says no knock on by Sean White. That pass is loose. So that's happened a couple times, but good skill by Connor Trainer to put that ball from foot to hand. Canada trying to regroup under huge pressure from the Americans at the breakdown. Canada seem to be uh, kind of unsure about who is taking the, the ball off of uh, fly half to toi. A lot of the pass is going to, to ground because no one is quite sure who's the rece intended receiver. And as uh, you mentioned in the first half, he and a lot of passes in behind the receiver. Yeah, Canada Friday night weren't happy with the quality of their passing. And, you know, the ball just has to be on the front of the receiver. It was good to see last time in the initial build up to that move to see Jordan Wilson Ross in from the left wing on the right hand side. And uh, great oh. steal by Aaron Flagg, 
Ah. He's made a big impact since he's come in into the... Uh, Bad knock by uh, uh, Mike Schultz. Gives Chapman the opportunity to run forward. Referee's going back to the forward pass. And he's saying. Again, that's uh, not an immediate advantage well, for, uh, for the Eagles there. Interesting, um, interesting. A, it looks like he's going to go to, he's <laughs> penalizing. He's going back to the forward pass. Not the obvious knock on by Mike Schultz right there. Oh, maybe he's saying it was off the knee. Maybe he didn't even, he wasn't playing advantage on that. He's playing it on this pass here. Yeah, possibly there. And what's a shame for Canada because they did have, uh, they did have a, uh, uh, as we have Sean White leaving the field to be replaced by number 21, Jamie McKenzie. McKenzie was Canada's man of the match on Friday and maybe his introduction just to give a, hope for a bit of a extra spark. Kyle Bailey down for, uh, down for Canada. Interesting decision by uh, Coach Crowley um, for me, taking uh, the seasoned veteran, the experience off, and, and bringing off the, the youth and exuberance of uh, young McKenzie. He certainly seemed to work for Canada um, previously on the first day of the ARC. We'll see how it goes tonight. Kyle Bailey down in the middle of the field, receiving attention. And it was interesting with uh, Bailey not dressed Friday night, Canada went into the game without a specialist lock cover. There must be some kind of tradition in the number 21 jersey. That seems to be the number of worn by the replacement scrum half as it was worn the other night by Sean White. Now uh, Mackenzie gets his opportunity to occupy that jersey. Well, of course, at test level, you're allowed eight replacements instead of the seven that you would see at uh, most levels of rugby. So that means an extra forward almost always. So numbers 21, 22, 23 are the back cover, usually. And Canada scrum here, and let's see Jordan Wilson Ross involved very positively in the last uh, from the last scrum move. Let's see if something can get something else here. Scrum under pressure, but Kleberger does well to free that one up. Schultz making a redemption for losing that one in contact. Oh, and that's flag knocking the ball on the US. They're here to run. Trying to keep the ball alive. Again. Looking for some space behind Wilson Ross, and he's found it. That's too bad for Canada. You know, good take up by Mike Schultz and some quick ball produced, but you know, the pass to uh, put flag under a lot of pressure. He's coming onto the ball hard. The pass just needs to be a bit more sympathetic and it needs to be in front. And uh, we just can't bash away at this enough. Uh, you know, the, the, the ball not in front just leads to the little errors which blunt the continuity. Barkwell. Bailey in the middle of the line out. He's been strong all game for Canada. McKenzie with his first kick, and here's Wilson Ross with the chase and the regather. That is world class by Jordan Wilson Ross. Ball's gone loose, but backwards. Canada in possession. Dutois chooses the foot option, sees some space in behind. Watch the bounce. Putting pressure on the Americans. They have to hurry it into touch. Well, that could be the spark Canada needs. Lovely box kick by McKenzie. Good lineup, for, take by Bailey. Excellent box hit by McKenzie, superbly regathered by Wilson Ross. And off that quick ruck, uh, fly half to Toit, spying some space in behind. There's the catch by Bailey, box kick by Jamie McKenzie. He's watching on replay here and watch this fantastic gather by Wilson Ross. Now Canada with territory and the throw. Bailey again in the middle. Well, Canada had an uh, efficient drive in the first half. And just a bit of buzz in the crowd, and that's what we need. That's what the, is needed right now. And a bit of soccer by. That's unfortunate. Uh, you know, young fly half to toi. That's uh, a lot of his passes seem to be dropping just as they, uh, just before they reach their intended receiver. So a lot of ball being put on the ground, and uh, Connor Trainer really making uh, the most of that situation right here. Is this one intended for Trainer? 
just down around his ankles. He makes the most of it. Yeah, just the, the very fine margins. But again, a bit of a spark from Canada and see if they can save me a build on it. No pass. There's Clark. McKenzie. Fitzpatrick. Trainer. Bailey. Good run by the second row. Canada well over the advantage line. McKenzie, referee's playing advantage. McKenzie decides to go on his own. And to me, no that, right, please. that's cynical play. That needs harsh action from the referee. Players miles offside and never made any attempt to get back. Canada still in possession. Oh, referee, he might have forgotten about the cynicism involved in that penalty, so... He's just going for the straight penalty. Interesting decision yep. on the uh, on hands here for Canada. Well, I think one of the key things is they have to. It's a good decision going for points. They need, they have to get some points, just some momentum, you know, some reward for the work that's gone into uh, to get get the position. But uh, I'd like to see that one again on video because that was a, a dynamic ruck in the 22. Canada hot on attack. McKenzie looking to run short side, and his avenue is blocked by a player who's two three yards offside. And I think these are things just infuriating for coaches uh, when, you know, cynical play, you know, is, is only punished with three points and, a, you know, really prime scoring chances missed. And no, believe, wa no warnings are needed. Believe it or not, in this kicking tee is unavailable in time for the, uh, for the, ki for the kicker. And so he's elected to kick for the line out, but he's already indicated that he's going for post. No, no, no. The post. The post. Uh, to be honest with you, Ian, I, I haven't seen this happen before at international level. The, the clock is ticking. Once you indicate you're going for post, you've only got, I believe, 90 seconds to complete that kick. And we must be just getting to 90 seconds right now. So it's going to be a rushed penalty attempt. And he's missed it. Well, if you agree that it's all in the details and the kicking tee was not available, that's uh, something that they, Canada will rue. But anyway, they're on the front foot. They've just got to shake that off and, and look to, uh, look to keep, keep pushing ahead. Right. McKenzie gathers. Wilson Ross hits up. Wilson Ross held up. No. Clark in the middle of the field. Turnover ball, the U.S. Referee's fine with that tackler not rolling away. So U.S. in possession, Captain Dolan. That's Barrett, the blindside flankers played so well. What a fend, what a fend. And this cover tackle coming in strong, but not enough from Trainer. U.S. scoring in the corner. Well, the Eagles are justifiably delighted, and wow, what a turn of events. Canada with a chance to close the score to 16-6 with a very makeable penalty. Seem to be unable to find the kicking tee, a big delay and a rushed kick, and then a turnover, beautifully transferred by, and then a powerful run by flanker Daniel Barrett, Daniel Barrett and uh, crashing over in the corner. To take USA 21 to 3 clear. Well, you say, Ian, you know, the devil is in the details. And does it all go back to that not being able to get the kicking tee? With the kicking tee on the field, would that have been three points for Canada? And none of this would happen? Well, it certainly would have backed Detroit to make the kick under, under normal circumstances. You know, whether he had the tee or not, he still has a chance to make the kick, but he's, but he's rushed. He's out of his routine. He's out of his rhythm. And... Uh, there we go, and there's Cowley, who's capping a pretty fine game, just uh, pouring on the, the details. So. Anyway, we're... So it looks like uh, Canada's going to take Kyle, number 19, Callum Morrison, coming on for uh, Kyle Bailey. And uh, An excitement number, machine. Number, number 23, Joel Dolasau will... Yeah. 
Maybe come onto the left wing with Wilson Ross moving to center. That looks like what they're doing right now. Well, the and fans. Mike Schultz come off. And I've gone for looking ahead to Saturday. Uh, that uh, you know, Coach Kieran, Kieran Crowley have to make some decisions about uh, certain players. He may uh, there may be a cutoff point where he thinks that uh, this game is not winnable, and that therefore f focus may shift slightly from his perspective to Saturday against Argentina. Oh, McKenzie drops the, the kick, so the U.S. on attack. Oh, well done by the open side flanker, Derek Aspen. Sweet hands. U.S. certainly looking at the polished article. That Maybe. ball went backwards from the number eight, so ref says play on. Davies made his own little break, found some space close to the ruck. And the Eagles really have their tails up now. That was kind of a try against the run of play to take them to 23-3, and now they're looking to just pour it right on. This is Wallace, the Canadian slash American, really putting the hurt on his countrymen. Release, one! And there's Lestrange. He's found, oh, behind Paulu. Some scrambly play comes and, to nothing. And every bounce going the Eagles' way, you have to be honest, you know, fumble to hack through. Uh, you know, wild ricochet that in the Eagles' favor yes. and scrum Number time. Substitution. So, substitution. John Cullen, the lock coming on. It looks like Tui, Tui Samoa. Tui, Tui Samoa, who's done a lot of good work today, and you know, leaving at 23 3 up, you're pretty happy. Uh, 60, uh, coming up to the 60th minute. So we got a real gut check time here for Canada. Yeah, Canada under pressure. Territorially on the scoreboard. I've shuffled the deck a little bit in terms of the substitutions who've come in. Yes, The U.S. number eight's picked up quickly. Canadians holding him up. There's a mall. So a turnover one. One the hard way by Canada. Come on, boys. Next job. Next job. Three off. Number three off. Canada just getting ready to replace the tight head prop. Ryan March. Number 18, Jake Nicky, who started Friday night against Uruguay, he is on. The pride of Williams Lake. And we can maybe even look for uh, uh, okay. youngster to Justice Sears, to, uh, who's also on the bench, just brought into the squad as a replacement for the injured Andrew Tiedemann, uh, to maybe get his first senior opportunity as well. well that would be a, a meteoric rise for young Sears from Shawnigan Lake School to... Leicester Academy in England, no, no, no. Castaway yes. Wanderers Rugby, and now yes, to Canada. Pick up by Kleberger. He takes on Derek Aspen, the flanker. Canada needing to do everything right now. Fitzpatrick finds touch on the 40 meter line. Pardon me, the 30 meter line. And it'll be U.S. throwing. And you just, you know, really, just the bounce in the U.S. step right now is just so evident that all the players are chip, you know, chopsy and chirpy and, and uh, you know, really good buzz about how they're playing. And, uh, you know, for Canada, just looking at, you know, 18 minutes to go and a long way back into this game. Real character test. <laughs> Ooh, well done by trainer. Great, good timing of the Canada's outside center. The counter ruck opportunity is strong by Canada. They're fighting in the contact area, and I think they've won this one. And they have. Mackenzie scurries in quickly to get the ball. Quick hands by Wilson Ross. Here's Maguire. A little bit underused on that right wing. That's Gilmore now with the headgear. Close to the right touch line. Mackenzie looking for the ball. Midfield offside. Offside advantage. advantage. Play it, please. Here's that man, Joe Delasau. Look at the feet. 
Oh, and he bumps him off. Staying in bounds. Well done. McKenzie hurried into contact. Kleberger, long placement needed. The twat going for the high ball. No challenge whatsoever, so U.S. safely gathers. They're in possession, and they really are controlling this match. Loose plate. Regathered by Scrum Half Davies. And as you mentioned, the U.S., they certainly have all the energy. They want to play this game. They want to keep the ball. They want to control the ball. And there to go. Offload in the tackle, disrupted by the man on the ground. Referee says play on. Canada's turned this over. Clark seeks contact. Canada's lined up to the left. Dutois. Got some back. De La Salle. Trainer. Down the sideline. Inside to De La Salle. What's the step? Oh! He's dropped it. Such a promising move. Canada needed to score. They needed to score right then. Well, they make to look at that. It looked perhaps just the straight line for the corner and the inside ball back to Trainer would have been uh, useful. But again, Canada from turnover ball. Exploiting, just also playing the bounce. Lovely hands. Good gas from Trainer. Inside. And now. Hard to say. I have Nick. to be honest with you, he was expecting a left uh, step off the left foot yeah. there from uh, De La Salle and the score underneath the post. And fair play to uh, U.S. loose head Nick Wallace tracking back there, uh, sort of just jamming up the inside pass possibilities. And that would have been a real, a real lift for, uh, for Canada. And anyway, the pressure's still on. It's, uh, uh, you know, if you could take, you know, score seven within the next couple of minutes, it still leaves 15 minutes to play. And while still two more tries would be required, uh, it's doable. Well, it's certainly doable. I mean, Canada just showed with that last four a uh, how dangerous they can be. And it is interesting that uh, I guess perhaps you know at, at test level that. Uh, you know, if, if Canada is looking at Dolisal potentially as a November tourist as a as an out and out winger, he plays his rugby at outside center for Burnaby, and uh, he's just you know massively dangerous in the CDI uh, club competition. Uh, but uh, started at left wing on and uh, against Uruguay, and he's come onto the left wing with Wilson Ross making the positional shift. So that might be something to look for come November and selection. Lots of movement there. Canada unable to challenge. The U.S. will have this opportunity to clear their lines again. Davies, was that a strong game for the U.S.? De La Salle. Oh, some miscommunication between McKenzie and Flag on the outside. Sees the ball go directly into touch. Pardon me, that was uh, Morrison on the outside. Sees the ball go directly into touch. The U.S. will have another throw in. See if Canada can disrupt this throw. Yeah, we just, uh, you know, again, another, just a bit of loose play, which means loss of possession. And they... Good challenge up front by Flag. So Canada in possession, but Kleberger knocks it on. So the U.S. <laughs> regain possession. McKenzie, a good scrum half, dropping back deep. Fitzpatrick, ball in hand. Yes, he has to run. Scrappy, but there's still space. There's trainer. Inside support, doesn't use it. Can help with the long place. McKenzie having to regather forwards, having to fight for that possession. Ref says yes. Hands in at the ruck. And again, that was just... Lovely little half break by Trainer there as he's looking to get up off the ground. Just couldn't quite slip it away to support players who were coming through. There was a bit of space, but Canada penalty. Oh, just a 
Short, safe. A safe <laughs> kick by Fitzpatrick. And, you know, Thank you. That might have been one worth the, just a, you know, a bit of a go-go for the 45, 50-meter one and just, just try to get some momentum, get this crowd into the game. There hasn't been uh, enough for, for the crowd to latch on to tonight. Very patriotic group up here. Nothing they'd like to see more than a win over the U.S. Loose play in the back of the line out. So not a very clean delivery to scrum half. McKenzie. And uh, knock on, conceding possession again. Yeah, just, you know, be interesting to know. I'm sure the Canada will do a rigorous analysis of the match. And, you know, all the teams have their KPIs, their key performance indicators. And one of them almost certainly is going to be, you know, just error count. And, uh, you know, when the error count is, is too high, it's really hard to, uh, to uh, put enough play together to score points. And just build a momentum. Scrum is there. It's been forced. Scrappy. U.S. somehow managing to maintain possession under all that pressure. Oh, Lestrange again in the air. Ball's knocked forward, trying to regather. So the U.S. giving up some very easy possession, uh, not too far down the field from where they started that scrum. Yeah, the big difference is they don't have to do any playing with the ball right now. Just, you know, True. knock it in behind True. Canada, pressure, hurry, tackle. Uh, Canada has to do all the playing. And the U.S. would be pretty happy if they've got to come from the Canada half of the field as well. Anyway, split field scrum situation, always dangerous. Fitzpatrick out Coach. to the right. Uh, you know, this is usually defended pretty well by yes, international nine. level defenses. Canada maybe spring a surprise and come left, especially if the scrum wheels a little bit. Good work by Kleberger. There's a gap and goal. Oh. Those are the two guys you want to have the ball for sure. Oh, just a foot in touch by De La Salle. But in just as that ball went into scrum, I thought, you know the two guys I want touching the ball right now? Wilson Ross and De La Salle. Well, and think, as it turned out. I think from split field scrums, you know, the traditional sort of, as we look left, there's the pass. Good cutout pass by uh, Detroit. And there's, uh, oh, just inches from getting wait, away. Wait, wait, wait. But the left-hand side from midfield scrums is not exploited enough. The traditional 8-9 fullback moving to the right is the one that's uh, used most often. It can be effective, but... Uh, Good read by Kleberger as the scrum swung in Canada's favor to, favor to, to attack the left side. Line out still stolen by Canada. So we get another chance here. Good introduction to the game to Matt Heaton, who's come on in the, uh, in the back row. Delasau having to clean up. McKenzie running from the base. Wilson Ross. Lots of passes still in behind, but Canada can still take this one on the front foot. There's Joe. Good work. That's Callum Morrison coming inside now. Good decision, I believe, not to offload that one. And the U.S. now just is offside. He's got to get the, you know, if they keep jamming up the game. You know. And Canada just sort of caution to the winds here, looking dangerous. Going back to the offside, and Canada's got really no option. So every time Canada's been on attack in the in the U.S. third in the last 12 minutes, in the last 15 minutes, the U.S. has gone offside, and we need uh, we'd like to see the referee jump in and just uh, really be harsh, come down, crack down hard on that uh, the negative play. Now, if the referee is maybe lost. Uh, lost count of the number of times one team is infringed or what section of the field that the infringements are occurring. Is it up to his uh, assistant referees to remind him that, hey, you know, this is the third one on number three or this part uh, of the it, field? It, it possibly could be. But, I mean, Montez knows exactly what he's doing, and he just, in his opinion, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe not cynical enough, but it's just, it's just enough to throw the Canadian timing off. 
Something to look at anyway. Right. Well, here we go, Canada on the drive. Looking for that elusive try. Now it's from here, the other night where Mike Schultz came crashing in off the ruck to take the short ball from the scrum half. Canada still hoping. There it is. Trainer, good. Great try by Canada. Good stepping. Connor Trainer. Conversion chipped over straight away. No T required this time. Drop kicked by Detroit. 23 10. Six, seven minutes plus some added time to go. Lots of time in international rugby as we have another look at uh, and it, trainer. And the key thing, it's easy for Canada to play now because there's nothing to lose. They can throw the ball around and gamble, throw, you know, you know, uh, you know, a lot of 50-50 passes. If they don't come off, they're not going to win the game anyway. If they do come off, they might win. Anyway, Canada's lost a couple of restarts already. Need to get the ball back right away and start running at the U.S. Defense may be tiring a little bit. Starting to uh, some take some, some penalties when under pressure. So big effort right here. Oh. Timing a little, little bit off by the boosters. Cam Nolan. As he's done several times tonight for the U.S. Strong underneath the high ball. They've entered the can Canadian 22. Ball's been turned over though. And then, then knocked on. Knock on. Knock on. Not advantage. Another beautiful restart by the States and gathered directly by Dolan. Just a little missed time on the jump. Yeah, he, uh, Dolan really is uh, world class. To, you know, it's, it's like he's like a highlight reel. And it's not just one, it's two, three, four times where there's, it's a cover tackle on Wilson Ross. It's taking the ball in the air going forward or backward. Is dealing with the difficult scrum. So into the Timo Titi uh, Lamasitelli in at uh, the loose head for uh, number 18 for the Eagles. And Nick Wallace, after a very good 73 minutes, uh, departs the field. He had a strong game, Wallace. It's a testament to the young man. Very strong game. Yes, nine. Canada get, being awarded a free kick. Scrum infringement. McKenzie, as you mentioned, Ian, nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Get some width on the ball Using here. Using the ball. Gilmore, Wilson Ross turns it back inside. Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Woolridge. Quick ball needed. One more number in there. Canada's play has been very sloppy in the phase play I've, I've got to say in them uh, and I'm not sure what the answers are but it seems that the, the back line when they get that second or third opportunity to attack they're kind of drifting off the ball running away from the pass and not really attacking at strong lines yeah well it's certainly uh, you know new combinations and uh, again it's you know it's it's you know certainly not uh, uh, laying the blame at all but you know Canada the last five six matches I mean a new number 10 every time and it just takes time to settle those True. combinations True. And, uh, but you're right it just it's just the momentum is blocked all the time by uh, by the errors strong tackle the US looking just to keep things nice and slow they're happy Happy just to pick and go, keep winding his clock down. That's Barrett with the speculative offload. Clark takes it. Now Canada in possession. If they can recycle quickly. Strong hit. That's a better pass from Dutois. Canada still looking for the elusive second try now. Nothing to lose. Wilson Ross. And to go. There's room. Here we go. There's there an advantage. Goes. It's the mismatch they want. Every time he's touched the ball, this guy. Every time he goes forward. And just Canada's just got to keep their shape and keep their poise. There's lots of time. Immaculate support of the ball and quick ball at the breakdown needed. Start, start. 
U.S. doing so their best. A lot to slow of numbers down. required at the breakdown there. Strong tackle, isolated. Wow, I see. Uh, referee deeming that, that person to be onside when he made contact with the Can Canadian scrum half at the back of that ruck. This is, but this is okay. Back. This is a broken field situation. This is actually Canada's benefit here. Mm. Ah. Well, they had to chance their arm, as you mentioned, Ian. What a tackle. To no end avail, though. Unfortunately, U.S. Maupin goes in for his second try of the game. And well taken. Just felt that uh, two minutes to play in a, in a scrambly broken field situation and the ball in Dolisau's hands that there was uh, a chance to for something unpredictable. Uh, unfortunately, ball going loose there. And Toby Lestrange finding center Chris Chapman and tackled very, very well, but uh, the offload to the supporting Maupin. And that is job done. And of course, now we get the, the interesting uh, opportunity here with, with uh, the, uh, the Eagles now on three tries. They might get the bonus point and get to five. Yeah, that would be interesting, Ian. You know, the, the advent of the bo bonus point in international rugby certainly made competitions such as this uh, quite interesting, as uh, Cowley is sure with the conversion. Takes them out to a score of 30 to so, 10. Yeah, so. It's, uh, I'm actually looking at all the. Uh, all the permutations. Well, I think that this 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 result actually will uh, secure the title for for uh, Argentina because even if Canada was to win on uh, with a bonus point, Canada could only get to nine. Argentina's already on ten. The U.S. could only get to ten, but then would lose the tiebreaker with uh, uh, with Argentina having lost the head-to-head -head game. Uh -huh. Well, you're the statistician, Ian. I won't even try to argue with you. But uh, this is not a stat. You got to help me out, man of the match. Now, don't don't just rush into this decision. I want you to think about it and uh, even think outside the box. Well, man I'm of gonna, the match. I'm going to think up for the U.S. I'm uh, very happy with the performance of Joe Cowley at fullback, uh, six for six with the boot. Uh, sorry, six for seven with the boot. A very uh, polished all-round display. And uh, even though he came on late, uh, the guy who gave Canada a bit of a spark, number 21, uh, sorry, number 23, Joe Dolisau on the uh, on the left wing. I couldn't agree with you more in terms of uh, Canada's player of the game. And, uh, and I have to agree with you on the, on the U.S. as well. Uh, Cowley certainly made a significant yeah. contribution considering although, that... Uh, although the U fair play to the, to the Eagles have had any number of heroes tonight. Uh, it's been a, they'll be very, very pleased with their performance. And again, perhaps it reflects that, again, we talked about 27-9 was such an unfair scoreline in their game against Argentina. It could have been a one-scored game and a grandstand finish, and uh, the, um, the uh, you know, so that, that the U.S. actually did a lot of good things Friday, and that's carried on, uh, that's carried on tonight. Yes, they've grown, haven't they, the U.S., in terms of this tournament. Uh, we saw hints of it in the first match against Argentina. And again, even for Canada, there's still so much to play for. That uh, you know they've got their big, the big, their big game, or on Saturday with yes. Argentina, they're going to have to be exceptionally good in that game. Argentina's looked impressive, particularly defensively so far. Let's see if Canada can get something going here with one more score. Wow, what hands! Uh, you know, and there will be a lot of growth too, Ian, personally on these players. Uh, been able to compete at this level maybe for the first time for some of them uh, under the microscope in their own country. And the referee has signaled uh, full time. And uh, that's the USA over their North American rivals, Canada. Score of 30 to 10 on the second evening of the uh, ARC Championships here in West Hill Stadium.
Yeah, and I think, Spencer, we have to be uh, full credit to the USA. Uh, better team on the night. Uh, 30 to 10, a fair score line. A couple of pivotal moments in the game, uh, you know, the biggest being uh, uh, when Canada missed the penalty goal. That would have brought the score back to 17 uh, 6, uh, sorry, to 17 uh, 6, and then the U.S. going the length of the field to. Uh, to uh, score, sorry, 16-6, and going like the field to put it, put the score to 23-6. That was the a big shift. Um, going to be very interesting to see as Kieran Crowley and his uh, and his coaching staff look at uh, look at selection for Saturday. Um, obviously, uh, you know, against a big, well drilled and polished Argentinian Jaguar side. Yes, the, and the size. We, we saw the discrepancy in size tonight. Uh, a little bit and how it played a hand into the Americans, especially come uh, come line out time. I thought the, the smaller back row of the Canadians um, of Kleberger, Clark and Gilmore, but they acquitted themselves well defensively and around the field. Their knowledge of the laws and their ability to link with their backs I thought was a bonus for Canada. Just that the Americans really didn't give them the space to use that speed and uh, handling ability uh, to their advantage. and. Uh, in some instances, um, Canada's play seemed to falter just as they were about to break through with their skills breaking down. I mean, lack of accuracy was the, the, the coaching buzzword after Friday night against Uruguay. And, uh, you know, Canada, again, they, you know, they, they need to be more accurate. They, they know it. They're not going to duck that one. They've just too many mistakes, uh, handling errors, uh, balls lost in contact, and uh, you pay the price. That's right. So we were, it was an entertaining fixture nonetheless. Canada versus the U.S. Always, so we're just awaiting the uh, the U.S. captain, Cam Nolan. He's going to join us. Pitch side. Oh, I think he's actually going to send over uh, the hooker, who I also thought had a very strong game and uh, quite possibly the best beard out there today, Phil Thiel. He's, uh, he was pretty accurate today in his line out. He had some great jumpers. His captain Cam Nolan being his primary target. And he's with Brian Kelly down at the sidelines. Hi, guys. Joining me uh, with the uh, captain of USA, Phil Teal. What a spirited performance by your, your guys. You must be thrilled. I couldn't be any prouder of the boys today. I mean, they came out 1 through 23. Everybody put an effort in. Canada came to fight. They played well. And we just made a few less mistakes. And we were able to come away with the run of play at the end. Your guys' next game is up against Uruguay, who you guys have a very strong battle with coming up to qualify for the 2015 World Cup. What's on the line in that game? The biggest thing that's on the line is, you know, second or possibly first place in the tournament because we're thinking about just this right now. But, of course, we have an eye ahead of the World Cup qualifiers to see how they play. We really want to go after them and really play hard, and we're expecting a very spirited game. Speaking of World Cup qualifiers, how big was this win for USA Rugby over Rugby Canada uh, after the uh, two games in August? You know, we were, uh, we were disappointed after those two losses in August. We felt that we played pretty well, and Canada came away with two quality wins. And uh, this was a little bit of revenge for us, and it's a really good platform to build from. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you. All the best in your last game. Thank you very much. Joining me, Phil Teal, captain of USA. 30-10 to 10 victors over Rugby Canada, the host nation. You'll be joining us on Saturday for the final round, Canada taking on Argentina and USA up against Uruguay in the final games on Saturday. For uh, the guys upstairs in the booth, I'm Brian Kelly. Thanks for viewing tonight.